So then we start with 14 matches have already been played and now this is the final one. This is the PlayStation Under 14 Open Schools Cup Final between South Hunsley High School and Oakwood Park Grammar School of Kent. South Hunsley already got one cup going back up to Yorkshire. Will they have another one to follow? John Scales has been a long three days. This is the last one of the three. It has been a really long three days. 15th and final match about to kick off, but it's been one of the most enjoyable experiences. It's part of the calendar that I really look forward to. I really have been privileged and proud to work with the, both of the English schools, FA and PlayStation for a long time. I really cherish my relationship with PlayStation that goes back for a good 10 years from when I first had the idea of the PlayStation Schools Cup and putting it together with the people that were around at the time. Here is the South Hunsley 11, Hardy Haynes, Jacob Gibson Graham, Sam Platten, Ben Admonson, Adam Myers, Levi Tarbotton, Charlie Fennick Denton, Jacob Greaves, Hardy Fountain, Dan Roos, and Jace Chanair. They're coached by Mr. Luke Dearden. Oakwood Park, Henry Lovering one. Shane Buckland two, Oscar Brooks three, Jamie O'Connor four, Ollie Deb number five, Evan Lewis six, George Robinson seven. Carlo Gonzalez at 9, Ryan Godin 10, Ben Jenkins in 12, and Tom Goodale 15. They're coached by Steve Smith. And referee in the middle. I believe, I believe that's Ian Tucker who was on the line last time. Here is the South Hunsley and Oakwood substitutes. Jude Tarbotton, Tom Hawthorne, Tom Rogerson, Marcus Dewhurst, and for Oakwood Park, Scott Miller, Alex Hopkins, Chris Olds, Charlie Fitzpatrick, and Tom Watson. Elementary indeed. <laughs> and for the last time, you'll see my features and, and the, the beautiful John Scales as well. Been wrapped up warm up in the top of the stands. Oh, it's been a real pleasure working with you. I really have enjoyed it. Yeah, the football likewise. has been superb. Nice to see Mike Spinks, the chairman of the English Schools FA. I've just said goodbye to him. It's his birthday today. Nice to see the crowd singing him happy birthday. He's been somebody I've worked alongside and closely with for a long time. And everybody involved. I know with the English Schools FA have really enjoyed this festival. Started the first time here at the Midyaski Stadium last year, had a great festival then. Another three fantastic days, so I, huge gratitude and thanks to everybody involved here at Reading. Superb arena for these boys and girls to come down from all over the country. Just to remind you, if you're just joining us as well, if you're from Oakwood Park Grammar School especially, because I know a lot of the South Hunsley supporters have been with us for a while after watching their under-13 goals be comprehensive victors in the under-13s goals final. There is a competition running right now. Send a selfie to us on Twitter with the hashtag Schools Cup Selfie. If it is the best one, we've seen animals, we've seen people on buses, we've seen... Classrooms full of pupils, people stand on stools. I've seen a dog in a jumper. <laughs> <laughs> we've seen some classics, haven't we? We have I seen mean, some great really, ones really today, especially. Uh, and uh, it's just surprised me the amount, the amount that have come flooding in. Really has been a great effort, captured the imagination, and it's the, really the beauty of social media, getting everybody involved. This could, and this could be a beautiful start here for George Robinson. Robinson with the shot, just wide. Yeah, good effort, wasn't it, from George Robinson? Coaches look on and realise that was a good opportunity. We've seen a lot of goals scored early in some of the matches. Gets you off to the best possible start. And the quality of... Oh, honestly, there must have been a, a, a top ten of goals that's worthy of any competition. Well, it's a good job you said that, John, because I think you are judging a goal of the tournament competition very shortly. We've uh, currently, one of our editors is currently in the truck going through all the goals scored in this tournament and trying to pick out some of the best for you to choose. 
after this game, of course, because it'd be unfair on these two sides not to, uh, especially if one of them scores a spectacular goal, not to add their, their one to the list as well. And also a save of the tournament as well, so... That should be interesting. As I mentioned, send us a selfie. Schools Cup selfie is the hashtag on Twitter. Send it to us. And if it's fantastic, but bear in mind you've got to beat people on buses, you've got to beat dogs in jumpers and everything else. Yeah, the bar's been set high. The bar has been set very high, but if, it's, if it is the best, you win a PlayStation 4. So get your thinking caps on there if you're watching still in South Hunsley High School. I've seen a couple of lads eating pizzas. Pizzas that looks like in an attic. <laughs> James Ruse and friends. In a box room, by the looks of things, there's a mattress at the back there, boys, but they're eating the pizzas. <laughs> They've got the perfect setup there. <laughs> it's a proper bachelor pad, isn't it? Yeah. It's like my student flat. <laughs> South Hunsley on the attack, closing this ball down. And Oakwood. Charlie Fennick Denton. As he just held back, he was. Referee right on hand. Let's make that call. That's the Oakwood Park Grammar School bench. And their coach, Steve Smith. Also, if you've got a question for John Scales, use the hashtag PS Schools Cup. Little shove in the back. Referee just calling him in. And indeed. Ryan Godding just getting a talking to from the referee. And allows South Hunsley to pile forward. Ben Adamson with the free kick. A little head on. Collected by Henry Lovering in the Oakwood Park Grammar School goal. Now the Hunsley Hopper is still on, on, the, uh, on the side there. And we've been joined by a new mascot, by the way. I don't know if you can see him there, John, right at the front. His name's Ronald the Squirrel from Oakland Park. I did chat to him before, I did ask him his name, there he is. <laughs> Resplendent. He's got a lovely jacket on there, hasn't he? It, it, it looks fantastic. Ronald the Squirrel for Oakland Park. Is that his tail? Oakland Park, I beg your pardon. Is that his tail coming up the back there? Yes, his tail there, coming out the back. Nice. And he's got the blazer, there he Look is. There. there he is, Ronald the Squirrel. <laughs> I think the blazer, I think the blazer is rather dashing over the fur. <laughs> Another fine effort. Oh. Hunsley the Hopper. Is it Hopper Hensley? The Hunsley Hopper is still. Hunsley Hopper has uh, well, got his arms folded and just waiting to get the atmosphere going. I mean, the support over the three days. There they are. The support has been absolutely incredible. I think there's something like something approaching six, seven thousand over the three days have come down and attended the 15 matches. Countless more watching at home, watching in the classrooms. Yes, indeed. Watching in been, offices, even. It, it's been in offices, and we believe that has been going out far and wide around the world as well. There's been people watching in Thailand watching these matches as well. It's already in five figures, the amount of people who have watched this over the three days. And there's a good chance here for George Robinson. Robinson now into the box. Robinson. Kicked out there by Sam Platten for the corner. Yeah, with well, George Robinson. And they brought the drums with them as well. They're making a lot, lot, a lot of noise, Oakwood Park, from Maidstone and Kent. Oscar Brooks. 
And he's going to get a second chance at it. Yeah, second back to the Chetty for Brooks. Alex Hopkins just sent out of play. They have to call for a ball. Oh, they've gone home. Of course they've gone home. <laughs> it's five o'clock. It's gone five o'clock. <laughs> well, it's gone maybe gone one o'clock. It's quite it's, <laughs> it's quarter to six. And, and, and look where this they can't find the ball. <laughs> there is number eleven there for Oakwood Park. Alex Hopkins chucks the ball back. For, the, for those of you who just joined us and don't understand why we're laughing, myself and uh, John Scales here, we've, we've been we've been having a joke at the ball boys' expense. It only seem to do half days. <laughs> they only seem to turn up when they want to. There you are, ladies, on the big screen. So, so let me count the mark. I think it's about six matches at the 15. The ball boys have turned up for. I think it's less than 50 percent, isn't it? <laughs> Poor attendance record. Been great. Our PlayStation have been partnered with this over the last three days. They've been really have been at the forefront of all the stuff. Been handed out T-shirt cannons, PS4s being available to be won in a crossbar challenge, and a number have been won as well, John. It's usually a difficult, it's usually a very difficult skill trying to hit the crossbar from 18 yards out. It is, and I think I've counted at least five or six have been won over the. Three days. Bear in mind, they only do this during the half-time break, and this is now the 15th match. That's nearly what one in three, over one in three, in fact. Yeah. No, it's been uh, some really impressive ones, and I went down on the pitch in the last game at half-time and had to go myself. But yeah, young, yeah. young lad walked away with a PS4, absolutely overjoyed at the opportunity that presented itself, and so two of the players of the each match proud recipients of a PlayStation 4 as you said t-shirts have been fired out the guns into the crowd a very impressive picture here from Alex Anderson watching live in Australia right now oh, well wow. 2 30 in the morning, morning. 2 30 in the morning supporting Oakwood Park oh go little bro is his brother playing well, go little bro, I think he's referring to Carlo Gonzalez. Hashtag with the hashtag Gonzalez. But great to have you with it, with you, with us, I should say, Alex Anderson. And also, Charles Fish, his brother's just cooked him a lemon meringue to watch the game with. For South <laughs> Hunsley. And he's got a picture of the meringue and, and he's watching the game in the background. Not as good as the cake you brought me earlier, I must say. That was a lovely little chocolate cake with a nice sauce. Very nice, that was... Nice gesture, wasn't it? It was lovely, thank you very much for that. John, you've been enjoying the hospitality. How was the shepherd's pie earlier, by the way? Shepherd's pie was very, very nice. Did you not sample that? I didn't sample that, unfortunately. No, you were down pitch side, weren't you? I was down pitch side, but I stole a couple of slices of pizza from my producer, Mike Roper, so... Uh. Not sure what flavour pizza it was, but... Uh, <laughs> it's done the trick until I get back to Wrexham at midnight tonight. Wrexham will be looking forward to having you back in town. <laughs> They've missed you. I know you've been travelling away at the weekend. And How long have you been away from home? I've been away for a week now. I was in Innsbruck, Austria at the weekend, commentating on sport climbing, which is very enjoyable. 6,000 people in the Markplatz in Innsbruck. A fantastic atmosphere there was there at the weekend. And it's been a great atmosphere here today as well, especially the second game we had today between Royal Wharton Bassett and Summer Hill, which was... An exceptional game, 5-3, that one ended, and it was it was end-to-end, end-to-end, all game. An absolute great advertisement for youth football, it really was. It's been great to have Nathaniel Chalabar down here today, on loan, reading from Chelsea, called up to the under-21 squad. Great to have the support of... The heroes of many of the players who have come along today. Mm, Alan Ramsey was here on Monday, Andros Townsend here yesterday. Yeah, they were both great. It means so much to have that sort of sprinkle of stardust, giving up their time to come down and support grassroots football.
making some noise on that drum, isn't he? Yes. He bangs the drum indeed. Oh, nice cross. Yeah. Opportunity comes here for Chanya. Or maybe it can come for Dan Roos instead. And another shot, another goal! Sam Hansley take the lead! Number nine, Hardy Fountain! It doesn't rain, but it pours! Sam Hansley High take the lead. And a nice little celebration as well. <laughs> he takes a selfie. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> wonderful! Oh, I love that. Now that is a selfie. Look at this. One effort, two what? efforts, and then look at that for a finish with his left foot. Harry Fountain coming onto it. Harry Fountain, the goal scorer. Great celebration, that isn't it? I wonder if he's going to enter that into the competition. I wonder if he uh, qualifies. Uh -oh. Well, th I've just been told an interesting piece of information here. For the Oakwood Park Grammar School, number nine, Carlo Gonzalez, he hit the crossbar here yesterday. Oh, did he? And won himself a PS4. All right, he struck off for the uh, man of the match. <laughs> he can't win two, can he? <laughs> uh, negative, the first reaction there is... Did he? Good boy. That's what's been confirmed by my producer upstairs. So Where are they from Oakwood? They're from oh, um, Maidstone. So, so yeah, well, I'm not sure if you had, if, if, yeah, I'm not sure you had the day off here yesterday. I'll come to sample the atmosphere, one of the two. Oakwood, Oakwood haven't been involved in any games, have they, over the over the last couple of days? I don't know. I, I don't think so, no. Yeah, special trip to try and win It's the first ever appearance in a national ESFA final. Is it? They were last year's Kent Cup winners. Very much a mouthful to say that one is. Mm. And last year's PlayStation Schools Cup winners, Ravens, would they beat them en route to the final? Get in here. And an opportunity comes here, just over the bar of Henry Lovering. Here's the goal again, John. Yeah, I just thought he'd taken it back on his right foot, going back into danger. A couple of ricochets. And how many times have I said it? I know most people are probably bored with my voice, but probably bored with me saying it again, but hard and low to that far corner. Time and time again, you'll see you've got the highest percentage chance of scoring. It's what you practice out on the pitch. Hard and low and reaping the rewards there to put his team 1-0 in front. Really good technique. Had to, had to avert the danger there, had to concede the corner. Chase Chanayri. Doing well, number 11 down this left side. For South Hunsley. It's a long little... Wonder here for the well. I, I wonder. It's talking about running the clock down, but my word, he's got what? He's got another. I would say go yes. That is a close up. Oh my word! There he is. There he is. The Hunsley Hopper. I think he's he's out of he's out of juice now. I thought the hopping around he's done. Shot from distance there from Sam Platten. Not to be on this occasion. away another opportunity here number nine fountain again for a second blocked on this occasion by alex hopkins it was really really good defending wasn't it harry fountain has got the eye of the goal he's going seeking his second there looks strong quick and powerful So what is it? five to six here, local time, the last match of 15 that we've had here over the last three days. It's been a long campaign for myself and John Scales. I think campaign's a good word to say. 
It's been a marathon. I think we've been on air for what? Nearly 10 hours each day. My voice has just held up. But I feel so for the MCs who've been doing a lot more talking than we have down below. Adam and Aaron. Yeah, I've never talked so much in my life. <laughs> 15 games. Each one's been so different, hasn't it? And brought Indeed, something yes, it's good to the experience here. All the way through from under 12s, under 13s, under 14s. There's no partner that the English schools work with that has supported more tournaments. Well over a third of the competitions that the English schools run. Really makes a difference having that perfect balance between a partner such as PlayStation and the English mm. schools FA that have been going well over 100 years and the heritage that this competition means to each of these players. A great ball. Just nudged away. Ollie Debnam doing well there. Seeing the danger and he drops off deep again. Godding. Ball played back to the keeper. Start again. Start as, as we mean to go on. Release the ball and just can't quite find that run over on the far side, but it does get out there to Charlie Fennick Denton. Fennick Denton got to get around Jimmy O'Connor and does so. Fennick Denton with the cross is a good one too towards the back post over the head of Chase Tanier. Tanier trying to get around Shane Buckland. Platten. Start to play, 20 minutes down, 1-0 to South Huntley High School. 15 minutes to play in this first half. And you've got about 70 minutes, well, I'd say less than an hour. In fact, there's Ronald the Squirrel. <laughs> and fans. Now then, this is an interesting selfie, if true. And I think it could be true. Charlie Shaw is currently stuck in a lift watching the game. Serious? <laughs> if that's true, I'm impressed. I'm impressed you can get signal. If that's that, well, that was exactly what I was going to say. That's a first, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm not sure which one's Charlie, but. Um... <laughs> it's a bit muse, though, doesn't he? I don't know how long they look like they might have been in there for a couple of hours. <laughs> not, not, not They're fading fast, aren't they? There, look. <laughs> Well, they've been there for a few days, the looks of things. All these pitches are up online, by the way, on uh, hashtag Schools Cup Selfie. You can see at the ball, there's an opportunity here. Needs to come out, Henry Lovering, and does so. Henry Lovering doing really well there to come out. Avert the danger, but free kick conceded, and it gives another opportunity for South Hunsley to... Put him back under pressure in goal. Ben Adamson with a shot, a, a goal, and there was a wall there, and. Uh, which the Bermuda of our director, which I hope, I do hope our director is actually warming up, by the way. He's taking, doing the crossbar challenge in 10 minutes. 
<laughs> says my top athlete still needs a warm up. <laughs> says the manager has seven slices of pizza in the last hour. <laughs> you should tell him he should be jogging around the pitch a couple of laps, get warmed up, stretch his thigh. Very slippy out there, tell him, and it's. He can play in, he plays in all conditions, apparently. Oh, does he? Uh, Diagonal, they were looking for, but well covered by Sam Platten. So is that too. Well, if that holds up. Oh, well, it may do as well. It could be an opportunity here for Dan Roos. He knows there's an opportunity as well. It seems to be just one-way traffic at the moment here, John, all in South Hunsley High School's direction. It is. You can see the ball just goes over the defender, and it does hold up well on this on this pitch. I think had he been a little bit more committed, he might have just got a toe in there. I think the on-rushing Henry Lovering, the fact that he was assertive in what he did coming out, only for so long. They really are struggling to get out of their half, aren't they? Indeed they are. Well, the Hunsley Hoppers got a, got, a, got a crowd to warm up now. I think it's the uh, the South Hunsley girls team have just come out to support their male counterparts. And he's trying to get them in full voice. Now, can Oakwood Park. Yeah, good work from Ryan Godding. It was indeed. And he's, he's played Ben Jenkinson in well there. Jenkinson under pressure. But does well. Comes back to Oscar Brooks. But Bro Brooks has got to get around Dan Ruse. Charlie Fitzpatrick. Ryan Godding, who's on the books at Charlton. Buckland. Nicely played there from George Robinson. Don't foul, don't foul, that's it. And out of play from Chase Chanier. Ten minutes left in this first half. Liam Rose has asked, can South Hunsley under 18s get a shout out for winning the East Riding Cup two years in a row? Well, many congratulations to you, Ryan, and the South Hunsley under 18s. Liam, I do beg your pardon. Liam Rose has asked that one, plays a South Hunsley under 18s, and he's got a picture with his medal. Well done to him. And the South Hunsley under 18s. Remember, hat-trick is what people remember you for. <laughs> Three titles is, what, is what's needed. So get back to work, get back to the training ground, Liam. In the meantime, Harry Fountain, whose selfie is yet to land on our board right now. And the coaching staff not too pleased with that effort. So far, the South Hunsley backliner holding firm, keeping everything that Oakwood Park Grammar School, these boys can muster. Well played from George Robinson, just dispossessed though by Levi Tarborton. Play from George Robinson. Trying to force the issue. Make something happen for him down the right hand side. Eight minutes to go. South Hunsley High School lead by a goal to nil. This in the under 14 Open Schools Cup final.
Fennec Denton. Doesn't get past Alex Hopkins. Brought abruptly to a halt. Good challenge. Yeah, no, I had a nice chat with David Wilson from PlayStation during the day, grabbing five minutes here and there. Very much enjoyed the uh, the coverage, and he's very much enjoyed this uh, uh, this spectacle as a whole. Well, he has. He really has enjoyed it. And we were talking about the school in London that we went to and attended when they relaunched the school's cup a couple of years ago. It was the final game of last night. I didn't watch it, but they were very, very unlucky to lose that. But this event also is going to be a feature on Sky Sports' Game Changes on Saturday morning. A sports programme dedicated to the young. And there's going to be a nice little four or five minute feature on this. And I'm basically saying to schools, get your school involved in this competition next year. Plenty of categories that they could be entered into. Oh, you look at over 2,000 schools entered this year in all the categories. 100,000 boys and girls participating. Fair, I think it could, could easily be more. Mm -hmm. I would encourage word of mouth to spread the message of just uh, how much fun this is. Ben Jenkinson. Oscar Brooks, Jenkinson, on the turn, a bit of chance to shoot, oh! over the bar. Great effort. Thought that was going to dip underneath the crossbar. Should we watch this again? Watch this. Just the set off. Bang hits it. I think the keeper feels comfortable. It's going to go over the bar, but just for that moment. Look like they might get back on level terms. Here he is again. Jenkinson. Good covering. That's probably a foul. Yeah. It's a little nudge. And it gives the impetus back to South Hunsley. Mm -hmm. Just to calm down, settle down, enjoy a breather because it's been a nice little spell for Oakwood Park Grammar School. Yeah, it has been a good spell for them. Four minutes to go in this first half. South Hunsley lead by a goal to nil. Still more selfie pitches coming in. Owen Briggs has got his sweets to watch the game with. A massive jar on them as well. 10p for sweets. 10p for sweet nowadays, Owen. It used to be pennies when I, went, when I was a lad. And he also asked me to give a shout to Connor Howard for the fastest 100 metres at South Hunsley. My personal best was 12.9. But nowadays you need a sundial to measure me for 100 metres. What was your 100 metres best time, John? Can you remember? No, I haven't a clue. Do you know what? I was lightning quick. <laughs> But I've got no idea what my, my best time was. There I am, timing my daughter at every second. I, I can't believe I don't know what my best time was. I don't know what best high jump was. What was that? 194. Oh, that's, quite, that's pretty good. North Yorkshire champion. Oh, wow. No less. Ball. Not seen by our referee. Dan Roos. Oh, he just nicked the ball around. Fountain. Again, good covering around, isn't it? They're working well together at the back. Ah, oh, fantastic play. From George Robinson, it was indeed. And he needed a good tackle there from number four, Ben Admonson, who's on Hull's box to stop Robinson in his tracks. Very good play indeed. There he is again. 
Getting his head on it. Going to need another challenge. And, and the referee letting that one go as well. Ben Ruse trying to play in. Hardy Fountain. Fountain just dispossessed there by Alex Hopkins. Rash challenge coming flying in from Evan Lewis. Yes, indeed. Well, this this game not have played as a physical pace as the under 15s Cup final. A good ball that was forward towards Ben Jenkinson. Oh, here's a chance. Opportunity here for Hardy Fountain. Fountain, let's for 2 0. Offside. Max Quinn's got a five-hour car journey. Not sure where you, where you come from, Max, but he's watching the game in the car. So that's a, that's a new we've, we've had a bus. We've had uh, dogs in jumpers. We've had people with lemon meringues. Now we've got somebody watching it from a car. So that's... I like, I like the boys with the bachelor pad with the uh, pizza and the mattress, and they're all set up for <laughs> a long evening. Well, absolutely, by the time this game finishes, whole Sunderland will be ready to start. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Sunderland, Sunderland Arsenal. No, Arsenal, isn't yes. it, tonight? Only game, isn't it, tonight? Only game. Big game. Oh. Arsenal need a point, don't they, to be sure of making uh, Champions League without in the, uh, the playoffs? The playoff, yes. And Sunderland, Sunderland, we know what it means to them, a point from these last two games, and... They stay up. Yeah, Arsenal and Chelsea, not really the last two games you want. But in all fairness, I think a point for each team may be a... Uh, Fair result there. I think both teams would take that in all fairness. Well, whether it's a fair result, it's certainly an acceptable result for both of them, isn't it? Exactly. You're right. Yeah, no. To cap the car at Sunderland. I think we'll be mightily relieved if it doesn't go to the final day. Well, in all fairness, my manager of the month for the last season, well, last season, but the last month and a half, Nigel Pearson, who's been. Oh, phenomenal. Oh, wow. Like everybody had Leicester down, doomed, they're gone, goodbye, and they've won seven at the last eight, I believe. Well, at the start of April, to be bottom of the Premier League and still manage to get on that run and pick up the points. They're not the 15th place now, they're miles ahead, they're well out the drop zone. It's the only times you ever see runs like that, is it as if you're playing a football management game and, and you reload after you've lost. <laughs> That's the only way that happens. Yeah. Wasn't it bizarre? I think you know what, whether it was a master stroke or just that he is a bit of a fruitcake person, but certainly had the desired effect to maybe take the pressure off the players with the attention all on Pearson over the uh, that six-week six week period. Yes, indeed, it is. It, it, he's got a thing is for us in the fourth estate here in the media. Sometimes it's all deliberately cultivated, and just in this case, it's a bit of both. Yes, we're just in towards the end of this first half now, which is a minute of stoppage time being played. And hopefully our directors will run down to get ready for this crossbar challenge. Play from Jacob Greaves and there's Chase Chenery on the ball. George Robinson. Evan Lewis. Alex Hopkins. And that is the end of this first half. South Hunsley High School, one goal to their name. And they have the lead in this PlayStation Under-14 Open Schools Cup Final. They lead Oakwood Park Grammar School by a solitary goal. One goal from Harry Fountain is the difference at the break. South Hunsley lead by a goal to nil. So just one goal to see. Excellent goal it was. Started the game well, both sides. Slenderest of leads for... South Hunsley, but they will go off the pitch into that half-team talk. The happier of the two sets of players here. Plenty to look forward to in the second half, though. So just one goal to look at. I thought the chance had gone there. Certainly thought the chance had gone there with a good block, but Harry Fountain coming onto the ball, and we've seen more and more of him as the game progressed and no surprise that he can hit the ball like that and has the composure 
to have a really good shot into that far post. The light on his face and his teammates. So at half time in this PlayStation Under 14 Open Schools Cup, South Hunsley High School 1, Oakwood Park Grammar School 0. Whilst me and the whole crew we're going to have a laugh at our director now as he tries the crossbar challenge. So I'm going to commentate on this because I think everybody in our crew needs a good laugh. That's our director, Adrian Battersby, who has been saying for the last three days that he could easily do this crossbar challenge. And so many of our crew do not believe that he was once an accomplished goalkeeper in his day. What day that was, we'll, we'll never know. So here we go. He's, uh, oh, my word. Ben and his warm-up routine has been seven slices of pizza in the truck. Oh, here we go. Right. Place your bets now, please. Here we go. Oh, no. No way. I do not believe it. Oh, no. No, no. He saluted me right now, myself, we have our head in our hands. He's just walking back now, look at him strolling away. How could he show a replay of this, boys in the truck? Look at the technique, what was that technique about? Well, the only saving grace is he doesn't win a PlayStation 4. Oh, no, terrible. Look at him. This is the most... This is the worst thing ever to happen in sport, in my mind. It's, I do not believe it. I'm getting straight in the car after this game. I do not want to see my director. I, I, oh, no. You do not know the world of pain that myself and the eight crew here are going to be in now for the next months, weeks, and years. And for another 12 months until we cover this again, hopefully. Oh, I need a coffee. I'll, I'll be back <laughs> second half of this under-14 Open Schools Cup final. We'll resume shortly. I need to lie down.
A very warm welcome back to the Majeski Stadium. We've just seen one of the worst things in the history of sport happen in the last two minutes. Our director hitting, succeeding in the crossbar challenge, stunning the world of football, without a doubt, with the, with the worst technique I've ever seen. Listen, I could watch this time and time again. I think it's one of the golden moments of this season we've had. <laughs> As you, as, you say that, as you say that, as you say that, gritted teeth, you know what? A, what an athlete! Oh my God! Technique was brilliant. Who needs stretches? I know he's been practicing for weeks yes. for that because, honestly, we have got to see that. Who needs stretches? Who needs to do warm-ups? Just eat seven slices of pizza before you go out. That's the, how you, you succeed to the crossbar challenge. Unbelievable. Oh no, here we go, what's coming, here we go, look, look, look oh. at the state of it, unbelievable, eh? Eh? The, the last time, the last time he kicked the ball, Edward Heath was Prime Minister, look at that. That's a, that's <laughs> a good strike, anybody would be proud of that, and listen, it doesn't roll on, but, oh, and again, and again, oh, no, hang on, there's a game going on here. Stop showing, there's, there's a game going on here, that's, that's more important than that. Look, now you quick, you've got another time for three more replays of that. <laughs> oh dear, very funny, brilliant. And the celebration here went, went on and on. Oh, it, it's, gonna, on. it's gonna go on for the, ne for the next four years now, I think. Very funny, very good. Right, that was our half time. I actually feel sorry for the people traveling back up to Birmingham with Adrian later on today. Oh, they'll never hear the end of it, will they? Oh, good Lord, no, it'll be, it'll be. Let me tell you about the time, you know, gather round children. Yeah. Right, we've got a game on here, and Oakwood can yes, have Oakwood. to find a way back into this game because pretty much everything that they've thrown at South Hunsley has been repelled. Indeed it has in this. <laughs> and Harry Haynes in goal is up to the task, keeping them out, keeping them at bay. This might fall kindly. Uh, good defending. Good defending indeed. Jamie O'Connor getting back very well. Still just look like they've got the edge, don't they, South Hunsley? Just to remind you as well, you've got about 30 minutes until the end of this game to get your selfies in the Schools Cup Selfie Competition. Hashtag Schools Cup Selfie. Send a selfie of what you're doing right now, how you're watching this game, and you could be in the hat to win a PlayStation 4. The organizers will get in touch with the winner over the next couple of days. So get in touch, we've seen some great ones, all right. Tom Young, part of the Samat Simpsons legendary back-to-back -back winning East Riding Cup team as he gets his medal. James is watching the game whilst on a boat trip in Paris. I've just seen that downstairs. Fantastic. Godding in the meantime. Good opportunity here. Possibly. Chance. Good save oh. from Harry Haynes. Good save. Fantastic save. Look at the players coming over to congratulate him. Harry Haynes with a remarkable stop. With a great ball across the pitch, and he just thought he was favourite to hit the target. Hit it with pace and power. Fantastic save. Free header. Free header. Go way off the line. That was Ollie Debenham. Ollie Debenham coming up from the back, getting the under the end of that uh, corner. And a free kick here to Oakwood Park. Billy Sagan has got in touch with us. Can Burrs United get a shout out? Because we lost 8 0 today and morale is low in the camp. Oh. Well, you can follow that up with. Good win next time out. Hopefully. Exactly. That's from the Liverpool and former Wimbledon Liverpool defender John Scales, who was telling us earlier about sometimes when you get hammering, all you gotta do is get yourself off, off the canvas and go again. It's and going a in, chance. It? Oh, in the back of the net! Oakwood Park a level. Oscar Brooks is a goal scorer. Well, Oscar Brooks direct from the free kick. They'd had a good little spell. We thought they uh, were unlucky to miss equalising in the previous phase of play. But from that free kick, Oscar Brooks here, goalkeeper rooted to the floor. Flight of the ball has deceived him. 
It was an excellent, excellent strike and back on level terms. And I think that's been coming for the opening 10 minutes or so of this second half. One one. Lots of time remaining. Just to tell you as well, at the end of the game here, I'll be going down pitch side to get reaction from Luke Dearden and Steve Smith, then running back up here, and myself and John Scales will round off the three-day festival with looking back at the top ten goals of the tournament. Which John will pick his top three. Well, that's as good a free kick as you'll see in the three days. Indeed, that, that one might make the list. Penalty! Go oh. on! Penalty given, all of a sudden it's gone Oakwood Park's way and our referee, Ryan Cornelius, I think it's Ian Tucker in fact as our referee, nudge in the back is what he spotted. Yep. And this is only the second penalty we've seen in this whole festival and it's going to be Ryan Godding the one to take it. This game has turned on its head in the space of two minutes. Godding against Haynes. This for 2-1. Scores! Ryan Godding has given Oakwood Park the lead. And the space of two minutes, this game's been turned on its head. Oakwood Park lead 2-1. Well, as you look at it again, steps up, full of confidence. You can tell with the way that he runs up. Hard and low to the keeper's right. Emphatic penalty and... Well, I really didn't see this coming at half-time, but what a turnaround. Got themselves in a commanding position in this game, and just how the emphasis of the momentum of a game can change with a goal, and tails are up. Suddenly, the players are running around with full of confidence. And now it's South Hunsley's turn to seek a way to get back into this game indeed Chani Air, Jamie O'Connor clearing George Robinson chasing hard ball goes out for the throw 2-1 the score now let's have a look at this corner pushing is what was given it for number five is it number five maybe no it's there it's not number six goes down from number eight there Jacob Greaves the guilty party I think it is Jacob Greaves that foul isn't it you're right and in all fairness, that might be a good spot there for our referee. Yeah, you, you were looking at the other bit of shirt tugging and whatever else. I don't think it was for that. It was certainly that uh, foul. The referee probably got that spot on. Something should be made. Tom Rogerson going on the field for number three, Sam Platten. We haven't had many comeback victories in this uh, festival of either, either John. Have I think there's only been one so far. That was on the, on the first day. Yeah, very rarely that uh, the team that's conceded that first goal has gone on in and won a game. They put themselves in a strong position now. Oakwood Park Grammar School. Well, South Hunsley girls did come back from 1-0 down in the last game. They're now 2-1 down here. Need to get back into this, and it's a good long ball forward. George Robinson. Robertson sending it downfield. The race is on here, and it's a good race too. Goal kick. Well played. From the young defender there, number six, Levi Tarbotton, the South Hunsley High School captain. Well, ben Jen Jenkinson getting after that, I mean, showed some pace there. A 
And no doubt Ronald the Squirrel will be pleased with uh, the way the side has come out in the second half. I think he does. Have, I think he's on a tail. I think it's half a bush down his back. In all fairness, John. <laughs> Twenty-five minutes left to play. There's still plenty of time for plenty more goals in this game. The final game of the 15 over this three days at the PlayStation Schools Festival. Send forward to Fountain. Fountain dispossessed. Yeah, quickly crowded out, wasn't he? Getting back after the ball, but ball falls loose. Play from Charlie Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Adam Myers spots a, a long looping run, but headed away by Jamie O'Connor. Only towards Charlie Fennick Denton. Fennick Denton beats one man and now has a little bit of space to play with. And a bit more space picked up by Hardy Fountain. Too strong, Ryan Godding for Fountain. Fountain gets back at, at Godding. And not makes number eight. And a card is coming here. A yellow one for Hardy Fountain. Not too happy with that decision. But finds himself in the box. All the same. Well, I thought it was a good challenge. Just overzealous. Ryan Godding doing really, really well to get back. Ryan Godding's been really influential, dragging his team back into the game, scoring the penalty. Really been at the heart of everything good for this side. This has Harry Fountain to that point, but yellow card for his troubles. Marcus Dewhurst coming on the field for Charlie Fennig Denton. Buckland. Good track of that was on Tom Rogerson. Chanier. Ben Adamson. Marcus Dewhurst. Honey Fountain. Fountain, free kick given. Jacob Greaves now. Gonna have a long launch of this one to put it into the box. It's not gonna reach just, just short of the 18 yard line. And now the second ball needs to be won here for South Hunsley, and it has been by Tom Rogerson, but under pressure by George Robinson. It will be an awkward park throw. There's Roland the, Ronald the Squiddle and, and the drummer. And then one of the teachers in the background, I thought for a minute, was Dave from the Hairy Bikers for a, for a second there. This <laughs> looks like him, didn't it? He's struggling with his hamstring or calf. A couple of players down on the pitch. A bit of a timeout for the rest of them. Just over 21 minutes to play. Just see replay of that penalty. Harry Haynes can't keep it out. No, indeed not. And 20 minutes left to play. Plus stoppage time, a little bit of stoppage time here, and it looks like it's going to be a substitution needed here for the player down. 
Ah, we have some pigeons. So, without sounding like Henry Blofeld on Test Match Special, my little thing, my little thing. We have some pigeons <laughs> in the stands. Yes, ah, hello, fellas. Well, they're not near us, I hope. I saw something fluttering past about half an hour ago. I thought it was a big crow or something, but. <laughs> it's going for the scraps of the uh, leftovers from. Uh, Your shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie or something, yeah. The Hunsley Hopper still hanging around the touchline. He, he hasn't had a confrontation yet with the squirrel. See how these final 20 minutes goes. We hit that mark. Struggling there, isn't he? I think he's pulled his hamstring. It's a long walk round from there. And indeed it is. Back towards the keeper, Harry Haynes. Haynes to Myers. Myers under pressure there from Robinson. A little bit of room opening up here for number 14, Tom Rogerson. The ball begins to bobble on the pitch in this late evening, 7 o'clock here, local time. Well, there has been a lot of games on the pitch, so I'm not surprised the pitch is just bobbly. It's held up well over the three days. Indeed, it has. The uh, ground staff have been mowing it each morning. When we arrive in here at the uh, Pajeski, ground staff have been here really early at the crack of dawn, getting this pitch ready for the five matches that take place each day. The last one of the 15 you're watching right now. It's been a superb football festival. And hopefully, myself and John Scales can be here in the near future to do, to do this all over again. It's been very much an enjoyable experience for all, for all involved. I think the most encouraging thing from my perspective has been the quality of the play and the, the faith that I have in the future of English football, both for boys and for girls. Seen some outstanding talent. Really great credit to, you know, all the coaches who have been involved with not just these teams, but all the teams that participate at the start of the season and throughout the country giving up their time quite often for the betterment of the team and the players, so well done all of you. Mr. Scales, your phone ringing right by us here. That, that's that's a no-no, isn't it? It's that's a major no-no. No, yes. That's the that's the first time in three days. Yes, it, 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 well, no, no cooler idea as well. I don't, like, I don't <laughs> like those. Somebody trying to sell you PPI, I think. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Quarter to seven. <laughs> Twenty to seven. Oh, good time. Yeah. Somebody trying it's to sell be PPI at quarter, uh, quarter to seven in the evening, isn't it? They Indeed. always ring at the most awkward time or. <laughs> Wanted to sell you double glazing, or <laughs> I've qualified for something. I've had them all, haven't we? What have you? Had, have you had an accident in the last three years? Is the, is the, is the <laughs> one I usually get. Yeah. Drive you mad, don't they? There's a great scene in The Simpsons of uh, where, when Homer Simpson pick, uh, picks up the phone and to a uh, to somebody puts him on hold, and he starts singing Wichita Lineman to him. <laughs> he goes, "You put me on hold, I'm going to put you on hold." <laughs> Sings, "I am a lineman for the county." <laughs> <laughs> I actually tried that once when somebody tried to sell me PPI. He put the phone down on <laughs> me, so it works. <laughs> it works yeah. There it is, the secret. <laughs> Get them off the phone by singing to them. Pretend you're on, pretend you're putting them on hold. So that's one for a try to everybody at home. Next time somebody tries to sell you something over the phone, just say, I'm going to put you on hold, start singing Wichita Lineman, they put the phone down on you. I it works have, every time. I, I, I should have answered it, shouldn't I? Yes. We've had it on camera and everything. 2-1 <laughs> the scoreline. Dan oh, Roos. Oh, here we go. Dan Roos with the Japans. Just around an hour then. That could be a penalty, I tell that you. That is a penalty. It is. Yeah, I think he's got that right as well. I really do. The ball carried on its trajectory towards the goal and he went down under a heavy challenge. The keeper came out. Have a look at this one, John Scales. 
Has the referee got this one right? He got the first one right in your mind. How's the second one? Yes, I think he gets the toe to it. Ooh. It really depends on who, who had that final touch. Now we have a man player down at the back there, which is Oscar Brooks. So our referee is going to call for the trainer to come on there. So Hardy Fountain's going to have to wait a little bit longer here for the penalty to be taken. I think we've got Ollie Debnam down as well, have we? Was he involved in that challenge and still down? And yes, the, other physio, uh, the other trainers coming on. Coach, just to check on his how he is. I think he's complaining about some sort of cramp here. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of cramp for both players. Now, the referee going to confer with the linesman. Well, I don't think they can be uh, really having a chat about much. I think they're just making sure both trainers are off the field before. Yeah. I don't think any cards coming out there, John, but you know, like some people saying, if it's a Premier League game, you, you might see uh, a red card for that, but... Yeah, do you know what? I never I never get that. I think if you've conceded a, a penalty in those circumstances, I don't necessarily see why it's always got to be this sort of red card. I think, yeah, if you're the last man and it's been a blatant... Professional foul. Professional foul, then no question about it. Straight red, but... I think both players are going to be limping off here, so... Once they resume play after this penalty, it's going to be a bit of a problem. And now I'll get a better view here. So the ball comes loose there. It's right. Who gets the touch? It's so tight to tell, isn't it? Mm hmm. I think you give the benefit of the doubt to the attacking player, and that's exactly what he's done. Dan Roos. Hardy Fountain, then. It's been a long time he's been waiting for this penalty to be taken. Henry Lovering in the Oakwood Park goal. Plenty of injury time we're going to have at the end of this match. No doubt about that. Fountain puts the ball on the spot. The partisan Oakwood supporters trying to put him off. Short run up from Harry Fountain. This for 2 2. Scores! Yeah, had great faith in Harry Fountain putting that one away. Didn't want to say it. Ten fate, but. Scored the first, scored their second as well. Got them back on level terms. And I think it was a big call from the referee, but tricky one to get right, but I think he made the wise decision in the end, but. Oh, with a ball on the spot. Just that like uh, Ryan Godding took the penalty with great plomb. Well, you felt it was just a little bit too far forward? Yeah, no, no a little bit left, a little bit left, a little bit right in all fairness, but. I think, it, I think it has been allowed. Well, regardless, it's 2 2 now, so we, we, we carry on, and that was a loose kick off. And all of a sudden, Honey Fountain's on the charge once more. Fountain wins the free kick. Yep. And a card's going to be coming out here for number 10, Ryan Godding. Well, it really has been there alongside each other on my team sheet Harry Fountain and Ryan Godding, 9 and 10 respectively. They have been at the centre of. Lots of the action here today. So 2-2, two, two, 12 minutes left to play. We're going to have plenty of injury time to be played, so it's going to be at least 16, 17 minutes here. Ben Adamson. Oh, he's not going to take this free kick instead. It's going to be round! Oh, no, just wide! I think a save from Henry Lovering. Well, it was a great save. You watch this again. It was dipping into that far post. Players were coming in at the to put him under pressure if he spilled it. Wonderful strike, this. Everybody thought it was going the other way. Keeper dives. Oh, it's a great save. The keeper moved to his right-hand side, didn't he? And just got flummoxed by, I think, thinking he wasn't going to take the strike. Well, here's another chance. The chance over the top. And all of a sudden, it's South Hunsley High School, the ones who are starting to come on the front foot. 2-2 the score. 11 minutes to play. Plus injury time. Just to remind you, if we are tied after 70 minutes, then we go to spot kicks. Well, that time it was Ben Adamson with the with the kick. Good strike, just over the bar. And hasn't the pendulum swung both ways? Indeed. This way and that in this game. And now it looks like it's South Hunsley on the front foot. And they could win the free kick. Everything's going their way now. Ben Adamson of Hull. 
on the holes box. Adamson, good ball as well into the box. Plenty of white shirts forward. Needed a good header, and he needs a good clearance there from Evan Lewis. Number 10, Ryan Godding, goes to his right-hand side and uses Tom Watson. Watson up the wing. Nice Pretty seven iron that. Yeah, indeed it was. Needed a little bit of backspin on it, though. As our ball boys are now going home, so the players have to fish out their own balls. Number eight, Scott Miller getting ready for Oakwood Park. Ten minutes left to play. Tom Watson. Carlo Gonzalez. Gonzalez, nice little turn. But just being fended off there by Ben Adamson. And it's going to be a goal kick. Goal kick. Here is the sub. Scott Miller coming on indeed. Ben Jenkinson coming off. Ben Jenkinson coming off the field. As Ronald the Squiddle also gives his congratulations. Clock ticks down towards nine minutes. Also coming on the field. Number 12, Jude Tarbotton. Coming off. Number 11, Jace Chanier. Yeah, he's done well. Off. A free kick given there. To South Hunsley High as Mahani Fountain was in, in, a, in a good race there with number five, Ollie Debnam. Well, I think Ollie was always going to get there. He's right to pull it back. Had three yards on Harry Fountain. The only question mark was whether uh, the mm. goalkeeper was coming out too quickly. So another long punt towards the box here from Ben Adamson. It's a good one as well, up towards the 18-yard line. Needed a header and, and won the header as well from a maroon shirt. A little bit of head tennis and the ball up in the air. And Tar Bottom was under it. Robinson. Watson. Oh, Gonzalez. Offside. Just a tad offside. As we the, cap, the seconds keep ticking down. Game tied at 2 2. Clearing out from Oscar Brooks. Some battle in the box there, from which you know could in South Hunsley. Six and a half minutes left to go. Six and a half minutes left. Gibson Graham. Nice little turn there from Marcus Dewhurst. Dewhurst into the box. Ball swirling in that little bit of wind round there, but it was a good take in the end from Henry Lovering. Comfortable take. Made it look very easy. Well, 
well won by Scott. Why Jacob Greaves, to beg your pardon. Ruse just goes down. Doesn't win anything from the referee. That's Scott Miller. That's Evan Lewis. Miller. With the orange boots on. Alex Hopkins. Scott Miller, dispossessed by Marcus Dewhurst. Dewhurst was probably pitched trying to play in Harry Fountain. I thought he might have been offside, but the referee, the linesman, let it run on. Then I thought it might have been handball from Jamie O'Connor. Running down the touchline, Carlo Gonzalez. Throwing one, though, by the team in white. South Hunsley School. Ended away. Four and a half minutes left in this final match of the PlayStation Schools Festival for 2015. The under 14 Open Schools Cup final. <laughs> Everybody but the linesman got that decision right. And of course, the coaches are siding with the one man in the stadium that they uh, felt had given it their way. <laughs> Coaches, both sets, encouraging their players to give it one last big push. The opportunity here, though. This could check this game. This could have the chance to win it. Good clearance needed, and it was as well. Yeah. So. It does look like this is heading to extra time, doesn't it? Well, this could be, could be heading to spot kicks, three minutes to play. There'll be plenty of stoppage time needed as well. well I know you, what you're going to say. Yeah, so I'm, I have I to ask exactly the question. exactly what you're going to say. You, do you have to now? I do have, well, not now, but I can give you a minute or so to think about it. And I think there's only one or two candidates that you are thinking about as well for your man of the match for the PlayStation 4. Come back to me in 30 seconds. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> very harsh, very harsh by our director because he's in a good mood. He wanted to, yeah. wanted to see you see deep me in suffering. He wanted to see me suffering, didn't he? With the... I'll tell you who it's between. It's between Ryan Godding and Harry Fountain. Two of them. I'm just looking down at the names on the team sheet here and just looking back over the, the 67 and a half minutes so far that they've been out there on the pitch. Bench look on. There's two minutes left to play. Scott Miller, Carlo Gonzalez trying to be fed. Put away by Jacob Gibson Graham. Two minutes left to play. Is there a winner due to be had in this game? So I've given you some time to think about it, John. Okay, okay. Give me your reasons. Harry Fountain and Ryan Godin were your two candidates for the man of the match. Give me a case for both. Well, Harry Fountain with two goals. But just led the line really, really well. He's been quick, strong. You know, that sort of archetypal, really good striker. And there you see him just helping it on. You know, when you play on your own up front, he's supported now, but spells he has been up there and he's been full of running as he is there breaking forward and as I said two important goals obviously mm -hmm. with this tie level but also Ryan Godding I think really been industrious worked hard Adamson into the box ball a little bit loose there needed to be cleansed at the second attempt and Adamson has just hurt his ankle as he tried to attempt that shot well, he's there, been there on my list of consideration as well, but I worry that's something uh, 
nasty with his ankle or his knee. Hope he's okay. Well, well, off, and he, he, I'm sure if, if he does get off, then it's going to be a blow if he goes to penalties because he's certainly going to be one of their penalty takers. Just hope it's a bit of cramp. Mm -hmm. So we are approaching 70 so, minutes. There is going to be loads of injury time, by the way. I'm just seeing okay, what good. our, our four, fourth official puts up. I'm going to guess at least four minutes because there's been plenty of injuries. But a man of the match, John Scales, I know you're, you're torn between Hardy Fountain and Ryan Godding. Yep, I'm going to go with Ryan Godding. Been some other really good performances throughout both these, both these teams as well. Charlie Felix Denton I was really impressed with. George Robinson. But there it is, Ryan Godding, the man of the match. Confirmation. Confirmation of that. Still waiting for our fourth official to... And I see a six. I can see a six. As long as there's not a one in front of it. Six minutes of injury time is due to be played. Wow. So plenty of time for a winner to come here six minutes of injury time to be added at the end of the regulation 70 and what you're seeing on the screen right now you might as well change that six to a seven because we've had a, another minute or so of injury time at the 70 minute mark so still a chance for both of these teams to find a winner adamson's back up on his feet chance for ruse here just over hit wasn't it Otherwise, this is going to spot kicks. Lovering. Dan Ruse has done well as well, hasn't he? Just playing off Harry Fountain. Yes, indeed. Good headed away from Jamie O'Connor. He wins it again. Only Debdom. Anywhere will do right now for uh, for Oakwood Park. They may take their chances in, in the spot kick shootout. They're all enjoying their day out. Well, you can see Ben Adamson really, really struggling in midfield. Can hardly run. Now then, too much here. George Robinson. Trying Robinson trying to play in. Carlo Gonzalez. Done a little bit of confusion here. The keeper had to come out and put it into touch. Good keeping from Henry Lovering. Oh, oh, an opportunity could be here for Carlo Gonzalez. Great he did a tackle. good challenge, and it was a great challenge it was from Levi Tarbotton. Off Tom Watson, go kick. Great tackle from the captain, Levi Tarbotton. So we played three minutes of the allotted six. I reckon that clock's going to go over to seven. Three or so this extra time period. And is there going to be one more golden opportunity for either one of these teams? Could it come from right now? Oh, he's just offside. Just offside. Keeper didn't know it, but collected it well. Flag was up. really is rising here isn't it as the mm -hmm. seconds tick away two more minutes left to go the only lot is six offside, offside. yeah just Hardy Fountain so it's odds on right now this is going to go to a penalty shooter to decide the winner
Minute and a half remaining. Fleck on. No the risk. Our bottom wasn't the best clearance from him, but his cavalry helps him recover. Oh, good ball. A good, very good ball towards Dan Roos. Needed a good challenge and got one. Dewhurst. Plenty of white shirts forward here. Dewhurst just misses out. 50 50 there, won by Gibson Graham. But he's disappointed as that ball trickles out for the goal kick. And now it's definitely odds on that we are going to go to penalties. 75 minutes, so. Legs have gone out there, haven't they? 75 minutes on this big pitch. It's a lot of tired legs out there, indeed. Good header from George Robinson, trying to head it forward. Another good 50-50 challenge between Dan Roos and Jamie O'Connor. And over the top here for Jude Tarbottom to chase. Ollie Devon is going to win him to beat into that ball. But the clearance wasn't the best, though. Tom Rogerson, Jude Tarbottom. Jacob Greaves yep. headed away. Downfield should be collected by a white shirt and is son by Jacob Gibson Graham. Out on the right hand side to Marcus Dewhurst. We played six minutes of stoppage time. Dewhurst. Scott Miller. Miller, well played. Telling Carlo Gonzalez to go on the chase and Gonzalez is going to be first to this ball. Gonzalez needs, needs a bit of help. Did, did South Hunsley and Adam Myers and Harry Haynes stepped up to the plate. Miller. Adam Myers got back brilliantly there, didn't he? Nothing wrong with his legs. Indeed not. Evan Lewis. That's going to trickle back towards the goalkeeper. Well, I think that could be it. Resigned to penalties. Referee has a one glance at his watch. Still a little bit more time to be played here. One more play, maybe. Godding. Robinson. Oh. Excellent tackle. And it was needed as well. And that is that. 2-2 two -two after regulation play. We're going to the lottery of a penalty shootout. We are indeed. And it's been a long three days and... It's been a long 77 minutes or so out here for these boys. The coaches embrace and go and pick their final five to take the penalties. Got to keep the players really focused right now. It's no time to sort of slump to the floor. Pick yourselves up. The game's still absolutely live, and that's what you've got to be psychologically aware of. It's no use coming off to the side of the pitch and feeling elation or dejection or anything else. You're still in the game. So, stay focused. No time for chit-chatting on the sidelines. So, 2-2. Two, two. After 77 minutes of play. And now, five brace souls will step up to take the penalties. Look, they're certainly focused. South Hunsley haven't come off the pitch, haven't come to the sidelines. Oakwood Park just getting into a huddle now and deciding who are going to be the penalty takers. Here's the story of the game, though, John. Well, Harry Fountain comes on to this one, doesn't he? Great finish. Excellent finish. There it was. I thought the chance missed, chance blocked, and then suddenly out the picture there in the corner, he comes on and strikes it brilliantly. That was a free kick. Oscar Brooks from Oscar Brooks. Brilliant free kick. This was the penalty from Ryan Godding. My man of the match. Thought he took it well, thought he was excellent in driving force behind their comeback. And then the equaliser. Harry Fountain getting his second. Getting them back on level terms and ultimately taking this to penalties. 
which is where we are right now. Our referee Ian Tucker. Did you ever take part in a penalty shoot, Ted? My team did. <laughs> but you didn't. I didn't. Yeah, I was brilliant in training. But just, uh, no, never got the opportunity in a game. Not that I was ever one of the first five. <laughs> How many have you given away, though? <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> You started off with a real positive there. You just <laughs> come in with it. You just set it up that with was a low blow. That was the director setting up the low blow, oh, by it? the way. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm going to turn him up, hadn't I? And just listen in. Right, I'm listening in now. Uh. No, look, uh, 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 you, you should hear the nonsense coming from, from my director. He's been chirping up. Uh, he's going to be like this for the next six months now after hitting that crossbar. Yeah. Um. No, he hasn't. <laughs> no, learned my, learned my trade well at Wimbledon and stood me in good stead for going on to Liverpool and Tottenham. Ipswich. So then they're going to go down to the left goal, as you see on your screen. There's the right of where, where me and John are. And we're going to be seeing who is going to be the first player to step up for this penalty shootout. Down to the keepers now. They're the ones who can really be the heroes here. It is Harry Haynes. Harry Henry Haynes Lovering. And, Hen and Henry Lovering. And the referee just walking up towards the 18-yard box. So then, I think it's going to be South Hunsley High School. I'll be the ones who will be going first here as everybody stepped up in, in a line and the first player going up looks like it's going to be Harry Fountain yep does indeed Here and the comes. referee has, has called Harry Fountain up he is the first player to take part in the shootout it's a long walk from the center circle up towards the 18 yard box it's a great picture there from our Roman cameraman Callum. He's there amongst the players in the centre circle. And it's a long walk for Harry Fountain. Well, Vikings get off to a good start. He's already scored one. So Harry Fountain against Henry Lovering. Penalty number one. Fountain. Same place as he put it in regulation. Scores in the penalty shootout, 1-0 to South Hunsley High. Next player coming up. George Robinson, is it? Number seven, George Robinson. George Robinson against Harry Haynes. Robinson. Oh, just underneath. Oh, it did, didn't it? And he holds his stomach. Relief. Oh, yes. Just across his face. He can breathe again there. There's a couple of pigeons just come across the ground, fl flooding towards the goal where Henry Lovering is in. One goal apiece. Number eight, Jacob Greaves. On the books at Hull City. That was a little bit of a little bit of a hole there, so that's why he's going to put it to the right of the spot. Greaves. Oh dear. No, 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 no. Well wide. Oh dear. Disappointment for Hardy Greaves. Jacob Greaves, to beg your pardon. Oh, pulled it wide. And Levi Tarbot and trying to rally the troops here. And this is a long walk for Oscar Brooks. Scored the free kick. As Hanny Haynes gives him the ball. Brooks, this for the lead in the shootout. And the ball's just moved, moved. But it's still going to count. Oscar Brooks. Good penalty. Good penalty indeed. 2-1 in the shootout.
Uh, yes, it was just images of Gary McAllister there in the 96, your 96 in yeah. Scotland, the ball moved. And Yuri Geller said that he was the one who he moved it, <laughs> if you remember rightly. <laughs> we move on. Ben Adamson. This for 2-2. Two -two. Good penalty. Good penalty. Always the sort of hardest for the right-footed player to hit it to the goalkeeper's left. Natural instinct is to... Ryan Godding now. To the other way. On the Charlton's box. For the third penalty. Godding. Yes. 3-2 yes. oh, the lead. Excellent game he's had. Shows the confidence, the stature to step up and take that. First ever appearance for Oakwood Park in an ESFA final and could they take home a massive prize on penalties. Number 15, Marcus Dewhurst now. He really needs to score this. He has to score. Otherwise they are in an uphill battle. Dewhurst, good well penalty. Done. Well done. 3-3, three, three. but they have one in hand. The orange boots of number eight, Scott Miller. As Harry Haynes just launched the ball at Miller. Now he's put that in the little divot there in the penalty spot. Not the best penalty spot, is it? For no, them? indeed. Miller. Saved! You know, once that gets into your mind, so difficult. So he wasn't really comfortable with it on the penalty spot. Now we are at a de facto sudden death situation. The fifth penalty each. It's down to you miss, we score, game over. From here on in. This guy's not wrestling around. Adam Myers taking no prisoners. But he's oh. saved! No, oh, no, lights was flagging. The lights was flagged, he was off his life. I think this will be retaken. The lights was flagged straight away. He's coming back over, isn't he? He is. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, he's way off his way line. Way off his line. Good decision. Very good decision there. Well, that's what they're for. They're for. Myers, second time of asking. Save oh. again! Again, brilliant. Solid. What a save that was. To the final penalty here for Oakwood Park. This for victory. Oh, Henry Lovering just going over to that assistant and saying, you made me do it again, but it saved it twice. Number 16, Tom Watson. Oh, it's a heavy burden on his shoulders. Tom Keep Watson. Him in this tie. This for victory. Watson. Yes. Elementary! My dear Watson! They have won Oakwood Park! That's their first ever victory! Their first ever appearance in a national ESFA final! And they take home the gold! Well, jubilant scenes there. The elation at getting across the finish line. Tom Watson with the winning penalty. Dejection for South Hunsley and those two misses. You've got to feel sorry for them as... There's a squiddle, roll the squiddle, they come home to roost. <laughs> but indeed, he can skip across the pitch. As indeed, they're all out there celebrating. We're desperately... Sorry for South Hunsley. But what a famous victory this is indeed for them. And he's put the, he put the nut on the centre circle. <laughs> there it is. Leave his mark. He's, he's left his mark on the house of Oakwood here. <laughs> oh, great scenes there. Fantastic scenes. Oakwood Park Grammar School have won the Under-14 Open Schools Cup 
2-2 in regulation time. They've won it 4-3 on penalties. The first ever appearance, as you say, in a National League English Schools FA final. And what a way to finish this three days of the PlayStation Schools Cup Festival. A penalty shootout takes us late into the night here. Three long, exciting, fantastic days. We've all enjoyed it immensely. Really have, and the celebrations continue there on the sidelines. Indeed they do. Indeed they do. Right, I'm going to go downstairs and get some reaction from Luke Dearden and Steve Smith. John Scales, I thank you for the last three days. We're going to come back and finish this programme up with some top ten goals of the tournament. So do stick around for that after the reaction. But it is Oakwood's day here at the Majeski. They have won the under-14s Open Schools Cup. Thank you. 
The South Hunsley coach, Luke Dearden, joins me now. Luke, it's a cruel way to lose on spot kicks, but your guys gave it their all, didn't they? Yeah, they gave it their all. They've come here. It's been a long journey here. And to go to spot kicks is a, a great achievement anyway. It's one of the worst ways to uh, end a football match and lose a football match. One of the greatest ways to win a football match. So credit to Oakwood Park. Um, they've come here and they've taken their spot kicks, scored their goals um, and done what they needed. So well done to them. Some good performances from your side. Harry Fountain especially scored two goals. That goal celebration was a bit strange, wasn't it? He's, he said to me before the game, I thought he was joking, he said to me before the game, so we can win this selfie competition. Um, if you get your phone out and uh, take a selfie of me if we score, I said, if you score and uh, it's, a, it's a good goal, uh, I'll do that for you. And he, he came over, I didn't think he was going to come over, but he came over and uh, fair play to the lad. He's put goals in all season. He's taken us here as well as the rest of the lads, so he's done really well. And you must be proud as the side as a whole. I, I'm delighted with the side. They, they've they come on so much over the years, seven and eight, and now they're in year nine, and, and they'll use this as a platform to go on. Their effort, their ethics, the values, everything they've done this year has been absolutely fantastic, and they're a credit to the school and to the county. Luke, I wish you and your side well. Safe journey back up north. Thank you, Thank you very much. Steve Smith joins me now of Oakwood Park. Steve, congratulations. The ambulance is on standby for you. Yeah, yeah. I think um, John actually needs that. He's a bit older than me, so he said his heart was going a bit. What a game. Unbelievable. I think both teams are a credit to their schools. Um, it's always uh, difficult to win on penalties um, and for the losing team, but, you know, I think both teams wanted a winner at the end of the day, and it was a tremendous, tremendous atmosphere and tremendous game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely credit to your school and the side. You must be proud of their performance that they put. A good all-round team performance, more importantly. Yeah, I think that's right. I think we've, we've built ourselves as a squad this year and everyone's played a part in getting us to this final. And you can see that again today. They all played their part in getting to the final and eventually, you know, hopefully, yeah, get that, yeah. that trophy. Yeah. So, yeah. Josh, you're one of the luckier managers right now. Usually in the past three days, we've had the squad soaking their managers. Oh, really? So, so you've, you've got what we've got to deal with at the moment. Tell me about this crowd as well, they, they, it came down in their droves, didn't they? And they were quite vocal throughout the whole game. Yeah, we had a massive push at school for, for support and I think it made a difference in the penalty shootout. They've been, they were tremendous throughout, great atmosphere. And I think the, the squirrel was the best mascot. <laughs> and he's left, his, he's left his nuts on the centre yeah, circle, I think. Yeah, that's it, yeah, he is nuts. Fantastic. Where do these lads go from here? Well, you know, we, we go again next season, I think. I think um, we'll, we'll, we'll try and enter the competition and see if we can get as far. but. It might just be one of those once-in-a-lifetime opportunities for all the boys and I hope they remember it and cherish it and look back on their medals and, 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 and remember the night and be proud of their, their achievements because they deserve everything they're getting tonight. It's the first time you guys have reached a national final. So what does this mean for the school? Well, it's massive for the school, yeah. We, we, we pride ourselves on our football and um, we've been developing it over the last four or five years and this is the first time we've entered the competition for a, a number of years. So to get to a final is unbelievable and to win it is just out of this world, really. So. Well, no doubt the celebrations will start when you guys get home. Many, many congratulations. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks. Yeah. 